episode of SideQuest Podcast. Listen in and level up. I have a great episode for you today, but first, as always, let's get through the show notes. If you're not following the Facebook page, head over to Facebook, type SideQuest Fitness into the search bar and like the page. There, you're going to get updates on podcast episodes, articles when they get posted, and you're going to get a brand new taco recipe every Tuesday for Taco Camp. Uh, plus lots of other shenanigans and nerd talk throughout the week. So make sure you head over to Facebook. You can follow me on Instagram. My handle is SideQuestFM. If you want to see some cool videos and random stuff on Instagram as well, you can follow me on Instagram, same handle, SideQuestFM, or follow me on Snapchat, SideQuestFit. Follow me there. Send me your questions. Uh, I want to get all the questions from you, help you as much as I can on your fitness journey or your journey in life, whatever it may be. But head over to Snapchat, SideQuestFit, follow me there. You get a little more personal, in-depth look at the shenanigans I get into throughout uh, every day. Uh, But I do love getting questions from the community, so please send them out to me. If you have not left a review for the podcast, please head over to iTunes. If you're not listening on iTunes and you listen on SoundCloud or Stitcher, leave a review there as well. When you leave reviews, it helps me move up the charts on the iTunes store so that more people can see and hear the amazing guests that I've had on and have on each and every single week. So make sure you head over there. And don't forget, if you haven't picked up your copy of The 7 Principles of Fat Loss, head over to sidequestfitness.com forward slash 7 principles and you can pick up your copy of The 7 Principles of Fat Loss. These are the same 7 principles I follow each and every day and teach my clients to help them shred away more body fat, unlock heroic strength, and just look better naked. So if you want to unlock strength or just look better naked in the mirror, head over again, grab those seven principles of fat loss, and start following those today. All right, guys, we have a great episode today. But before I hop in there, just want to let you know, I did have a couple of slots open up in my coaching program. So if you're interested in taking your body to the next level, unlocking strength, shredding away a few pounds of body fat, And just looking better naked, then head over to sidequestfitness.com slash coach and apply today. I had a couple spots open up, so don't wait until the new year when everyone's applying and everyone's trying to to take those resolutions to the next level. Start today, crush it during the holidays, and set your goals on fire before 2017 starts. My guest today is none other than Steve Hall of revivestronger.com. Steve and I get into a ton of great information and talk about a lot of really great things in this episode. So let's get into it and hear from Steve Hall of RevivestRonger.com. Step up and you got to get it fitness. Host Rob at the moment and the quest is you got to check in and wreck it. You're breaking personal records and with the help of the guests, you won't be guessing on the lessons. That's a plus five fears. Got a low key band right here. You want to meet him, there's no better way to greet him than to strike a boss pose, take a look into the mirror. All right, guys, welcome to the show. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, I have a great guest for you today. I'll try and keep the intro uh, for him very short, but uh, he's also a podcast host and he's had a lot of amazing people on his show as well. Uh, he also writes over at revivestronger.com uh, and coaches people uh, over there. But I've enjoyed his content. I've enjoyed getting to to know him in the online sphere. Uh, and uh, I wanted to get him on the show. Uh, he's a bodybuilder on the side as well as a coach. Uh, and I'm always intrigued by people's stories. Uh, and he has an excellent one. Um, and I just love a lot of the content that he puts out because it's short, it's sweet, it's to the point. It's not like yours truly, who's already rambling 45 seconds into this, like I do in nine out of 10 of my articles. Uh, but the one and the only Steve Hall of revivestronger.com, welcome to the show. Cheers, Robbie. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, I do also love getting the Brits on my show um, because it's just a good time. It's always a good time, uh, though the time difference is always slightly obnoxious. Um, Cause it's like, Oh, Oh, right. You need to interview like at 6 AM. Cause it's 11 AM there ah, time. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine it's worse for you. Cause you're like, Oh, I want to go to bed. Oh no. You can only interview at three o'clock your time. That's like eight o'clock mine. I think I've been lucky with Mike because he interviews in the middle of the day yeah. for, for us. So, which is like this sort of time for, for us which isn't a bad time at all it's like our evening it's not late uh but if you wanted to be like early morning or late at night it might start screwing around uh, 
But I think I might give Mike, uh, I might let him off now and then if he wanted to do one of those showings because he's just unbelievable, the content he comes out with. Yeah, and you're talking about Mike Isertel, correct? Mike Isertel, yeah. Dude, oh, man, there are so many people in the industry that are just so good at stuff and he's just one of those guys who he, he's got it. He, he, he's smart, but he presents it in a way that like you can sort of really dig into it. Um, and, and, and really understand it, even if you aren't like a gym bro. Um, I mean, considering he's, he's huge yeah, and yeah. he's, he's got a PhD, a PhD, like sports physiology. He's like ridiculously strong and like can beat anyone up. He's so relatable. It's yeah. crazy. Like it just, he'll be talking along and then he'll come out with a swear word and a joke and you'll be back. You'll be like, oh yeah, that's what we're talking about. I'm listening again. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, some people can, they have a lot of content to say, but because he just makes it entertaining, it's just, it just stays. And that's, so that's something that like I've struggled with as, as a writer at times is making things sort of, sort of entertaining. Um, and you do a good job of, of that. And a lot of the things that you write, you know, you, you don't try and delve into a whole lot of science. Like you kind of present this and then you, you continue and you present it in a way that anyone can read it. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you dig through the science stuff and not sound so scientific and keep your sort of personal side in your own writing? Thank you. Um, I appreciate that because that's exactly what I try and do. And it, it certainly, I didn't do it initially from like the get go because especially coming out of university when I was, you reference studies in there and basically like, right. you write, I, I mean, I remember writing, uh, what are they called? essays and uh basically taking chunks and putting into there and then trying to make it sound like you've written it but it never did and so i was doing the same initially when i started my blog post i was like reading through textbooks and like kind of just trying to change what they said to my words but it didn't really work so i ended up like some of my old blog posts when I, i actually had another website before the one i've got now they just sounded like textbooks and people don't want to want to read textbooks it's a blog post you have to make it relatable to you so I think someone who really helped me when I initially got into writing was Mike Samuels uh, because from healthy yeah. healthy living heavy lifting, heavy lifting. God, yeah, yeah, he's, right. <laughs> yeah he's he, he's been on the it was like a year ago I think Mike year and a half ago actually Mike was on the show um but yeah so he's his his, his stuff is blog. really go ahead <laughs> it's just gonna say he when I I wanted to get a guest blog post for him and he yeah. was like, you need to make this, you need to put a story behind it. You've got to make it a bit more kind of interactive. And so I had to do that. And like, he was really like, he, he probably wanted me to learn maybe. And since doing that, I've been like, right. So when I do this, I need to give an example, talk about a client who's been right. through it, talk about this case I've been through it, make it more relatable to the client. Because yeah, I mean, if people are reading your stuff and it's a textbook that they're, they're just going to switch off, they're going to go somewhere else. There's website and there's people that can do that better than me as well. Like Lar McDonald, if you read his website and he's still entertaining within it, like he's still yeah. swear and like to yeah. talk about some things, they're chucking some monkeys or something. <laughs> and uh, it's just, yeah, it's just finding your voice, which is really difficult. And I think also talking it through once I've read co- my content, talking it out as if it was me speaking helped. Um, but, and, and again, just reading other people's work. Um, yeah, that's, I think that's any, anyone who sort of gets into the world, it's, it's hard to, I feel like I'm still trying to find my voice at times. Uh, and sometimes an article feels like it's in a different voice than like, another. like sometimes I get very inspirational with things. And then other times I can be like very aggressive and in your face about things. Uh, so it's like just trying to find what works for you. Uh, And I still feel like even two years into the podcast, I'm still (laughs) trying to find my voice in the podcast. Um, so you do a lot of bodybuilding and I know you, you've, you're in the off season right now. And, and you told me before you got on that, uh, it's, it's a little bit of a, of a downtime for you cause you're, you're suffering through an injury and you can't really train lower body. Um, how are you? So what is that like? Cause I, I mean, I kind of injured myself the other day a little bit, but like I've never had something where like I couldn't necessarily train some portion. Um, how are you sort of working through that? So it's really difficult. Um, injuries suck. They really do. And I've had, I, I was surprised actually. I was at my parents the last weekend gone. I was talking to my dad about like healthcare, about this injury. And he was like, 
where you want to, if you're going to get healthcare, like privately, you want to go on a no history basis because your history is awful. I was like, what? I'm healthy. What's wrong with me? And then I, he taught me through all the things I've been through. And I'm like, right, yeah, I've been through quite a lot of bad stuff. Um, and having been through that, I think it's helped me. So I've, I've been through times when I had quite a horrific accident a while ago, which is what Revive Stronger is all about, kind of getting through these sticking points yeah. and getting stronger. Uh, it, yeah, not being able to train to your fullest is frustrating. And whenever I've tried to push through those moments, it set me back worse. And you always have to have that in the back of your mind that you have to take a, a long term mindset right. and it takes some maturity. It really helps having a coach. Um, not that I have one at the moment, so that's pro- I probably pushed it too far <laughs> too long. And, um, I think it's really difficult because injuries almost come with the territory, especially when you're like powerlifting, bodybuilding, when you're trying to push your body to the limits at times, although we really hope injuries don't come, I think even with the best fatigue management, even with deloads, light days, active recovery, I think injuries just, they sometimes crop out of nowhere. And quite often, I mean, for myself, some of the injuries that crop up now are things that I've done in my past when I didn't know any better. When I was a kid, I played sport and get injured. And then that has long-term consequences for myself. But at the moment, I'm basically taking the opportunity to hammer my upper body, which also needs a ton of work. And I'm doing a bit of uh, blood flow restriction training or occlusion training for yeah. my for my legs, basically. A bit of myo reps as well, because I can handle a, a little bit more load, basically pump work. Uh, um, and I'm just doing a push pull split at the moment. So four times a week and I'm just doing pushing movements, pulling movements, pushing, pulling, and then just chuck in, I can do carbs as well and they need to come up big time. So it's taking an opportunity to bury those up too. You know, I, I love that, that you mentioned that because most of the time, you know, when people get injured, they just, Oh, that's it. I'm done. You know, they, they, they don't do anything. Um, and I think that's one thing that I've learned from a lot of people that, that I've read and, and sort of got to know in the industry is that you can train around an injury. Um, don't, don't just give up. And, you know, it's almost true for, for life when life decides to throw all the shit it can at you. Like, you still have an opportunity to improve something. And you're taking this opportunity to be like, well, I can't really squat or deadlift, but I need to get bigger up top in my chest and my back. So, and arms. So why not use that? This is the perfect opportunity. It's kind of like life went, Hey, this is what you really need to work on. <laughs> so I'm going to make you work on it. Uh, definitely. Definitely. I think, yeah, there's, there's times and often when these things happen, it, it's a kind of opportunity in disguise, like going on holiday. None of it. Like if you love training, you probably never take like active recovery periods, like longer than deloads. So going on holiday is a good time to actually just, Okay, actually take an active recovery period. Yeah. Especially if you're one of those people that do push hard. And I tend to be one of those people, like I'll usually try and find the gym. <laughs> even <laughs> even on even on a holiday. So what do you what do you do for active recovery when you're when you're on a holiday? What's your favorite thing to do that isn't like lifting or or uh you know, repping out curls? I think I just love hiking and walking. I don't think you can beat it just because you get the combination of kind of I, I like sweating. I've worked like when I, before I lifted, I loved cardio and sweating and getting knackered. So walking is quite a nice way of doing that without kind of impacting your recovery. Right. And then hopefully it's in a hot country and you can get like a full on sweat on, yeah. take the top off, get, a, t- get some vitamin D, feel good about yourself. And, um, but yeah, hiking up some mountains or something like that. I'm not a good swimmer. I don't like swimming. So I never <laughs> do any of that. I'll be the person lying by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> I like lying by the, see the pool I will do. I don't, I have, I'm terrified of sharks. Uh, so like, I don't, I don't care where it is. You could be like, Oh, there are no sharks here. I don't care. There's <laughs> water and it's a, it's tied to the ocean. Who knows what could happen? Um, I, yeah. Hiking and, 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 uh, sort of, um, those long things, you know, low state, uh, low steady state cardio are things I really enjoy, even though I'm trying to force myself to run this fall. I hate it already <laughs> with a passion. I hate it, but it is, there are some benefits to it. So I'm trying to reap some of those benefits. Um, but you've, you've been, you know, as you sort of, you've recovered from this, this horrific accident. Could you just real quick, tell uh, the backstory of how that happened and, and what sort of brought you out of that point to where you are now? So without kind of 
I could talk about it for far too long, I think. But essentially, when I was at university, kind of second year, I used to, I was like, I almost did CrossFit. I was like trying to do rowing, uh, not CrossFit, but I was trying to do rowing. I was trying to do, I was doing running club. I was doing football. I was doing weight training and I was just trying to do it all. So on one of the typical 10 kilometer run I used to do, I was on the way home kind of on for a PB. I had like my Garmin. I don't know if you have Garmin in you. Yeah, 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 you have Garmin. I had like my Garmin, like um, heart rate monitor on my watch, everything. So I could see that I was like on for a personal best came to some flashing lights at a crossing and it was amber. So I was like, right, I'm going look to my right and white van smacked me. Uh, so I had, <clears throat> had some scarring fractured skull. Uh, but the worst things were kind of the long-term head injuries kind of to the brain. So my hypothalamus, which is like the control center of everything just kind of went out of whack. So what turned into kind of, yeah, it just turned into a lot of long-term health problems, kind of poor sodium control. So I had to be on the extreme water limits. Um, I was on diuretics for a long period of time. I lost so, like any kind of fitness, muscle mass, everything went. And it was a really depressing time in my life. And it's not something I particularly look like back on in kind of, I'm not fond of it, but it's definitely nothing I necessarily regret because it makes me appreciate every single day so much more. And so when I was coming out of that, I had to find something that I could control and I I'm still quite controlling to this day. So that's why I love the control of my nutrition, like doing my fitness plan stuff. It's something I actually really enjoy and having control of my training in the gym and my own results was something I really enjoyed because I think I couldn't do running again because it just, the the degree of like being out on roads and things it's just i don't know it's something out of my control and i never like it like anything out of my control now i'm a bit like yeah. uh so yeah finding the weights and stuff again and knowing that i could do it in a better way and gain weight better although i didn't initially i kind of completed a, an alan aragon folk fat <laughs> uh, I, the, the speed i gained weight at was incredible i, I was looking for half a stone a week it was ridiculous re- ridiculous uh so yeah i went through a complete period of just eating far too much food but it was all clean food so it was meant to be good, the good stuff for me right. um and this was just booped through basic research on the internet not really finding the right resources which I, I still think although i feel like we're not a small niche i still think we are a small niche like there's not that many people that really know what they're doing there's a lot of people that are still lost out there so i went through that whole period eventually kind of recovered. And as I recovered, I kind of found La McDonald, Alan Aragon, completely disagreed with everything they said. And then it really challenged my beliefs. And I actually probably for a month, I was like, no way. And then slowly, but surely it was more the dieting side. I started incorporating like treaty things post-workout. And I was like, oh, I can get away with this. And then you kind of just realize this, it's science. It makes sense. Listen to these smart guys. And after then finding like 3D Muscle Journey, watching them on YouTube, reading all of La McDonald's articles, their books, Alan Aragon's books. Alan Aragon then came to the UK and did a conference um, years ago. The first one was actually ages ago now. And then I decided, right, I, I built my body up now to a good position. I want to show that I'm healthy and that I can compete in like an extreme sport. So I then decided to enter a bodybuilding show and did that. And I was kind of shocked at that I could be at such a poor health and get into such an extreme kind of body that a lot of people would kind of find very difficult to get to and they're in good health. So I felt like if I can do that, I can help anyone do it, which I still believe today that I can almost help anyone achieve what kind of get to a better position than they are now. Um, and that's all how it came from how much of a struggle was that first bodybuilding show? Cause you like your body went through a lot, Steve, like you, you know, you, you, you're in that wreck, you lose muscle mass. Uh, you know, you have all the issues with, you know, in, in your brain with, with things and, and sodium and water and like how now you get into things where like, you're really calorically like restricting yourself to get really shredded on stage. Like how did, how did you, did you find strength from that old thing or did your body sort of fight you as you were going through it? 
So my body for sure fought me. Um, whenever I bring it up with my girlfriend about competing and maybe doing it in the future, she's like, she just tur- she just kind of turns away from me and is like, don't don't want to talk about it. Uh, I think I became a bit of a different person. I think everyone to a degree does, but for sure, I remember referencing my how I felt in the hospital to how I felt during the like when I was in the deep deep stages of prep, just kind of cloudy brain no energy levels just not wanting to i think the worst thing about prep and going to those extreme body fat percentages is having no energy you just you don't want to do anything for anyone but yourself and i would never recommend anyone to do such a thing unless they're in a very stable position position in life and luckily for me it kind of was um it just turned out okay but yeah, I was, I was like, people were, my parents were not encouraging it at all because they were like, a part of my head injury caused me to have low testosterone levels. So I actually had to go on a short term TRT course right. to get those back up. And then I, I actually only got off that because I was like, to my doctor, I want to come off because I want to compete naturally. And I, I can't be on this long term if I want to do that. And he was like, I doubt that you're going to be able to recover your own levels. And I kind of thanked bodybuilding, good nutrition to have help, helped me get my natural levels back. Whether or not it, it is that, I don't know. But it, it, it sounds good to me and it keeps me doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's good to hear, man. Uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's I have to say I, I get a lot of strength and, and power just from your words and that you were like, look, I, I was in a spot where most people would just give up, you know, and they, they would accept that they couldn't better themselves. Um, and you ha- have fought back from that. And that's like, that's th- those are the stories I want to share with the world. Cause I know a lot of people see us and, uh, you know, they see pictures of, of us online and they go, Oh man, well, all right, fine. You're a fat kid and you're, you're whatever. But like these stories tell more than just, Hey, I was formerly a fat kid and now I'm really skinny. Like, let me really tell you what happened and some of the, the yeah. pain that I had to go through. Um, because maybe you had it worse and, and obviously you, you, you did, um, so I was, I'm reading through a lot of your stuff uh, and taking a lot of things away from, from your articles. Uh, this question sort of popped up and I think we've kind of been talking about it in a roundabout way. Um, but what's the most important value that you try to display to your clients or readers? I think that's a really difficult thing to answer, <laughs> but it, it's, it's really good. Uh, it's a, a brilliant question because it really makes me think. And I think I try and, I try and give them the tools so that they can do what they want with their body and that they, they don't have a barrier that there is always an answer. There is always a way. And that's why I love science because I've had clients come to me that, are well, especially female clients, like they cannot lose weight. They've said they can't lose weight. They've been with other coaches. They haven't been successful. And I am like, we're going to find a way. There's always a way to do what we need to do. Um, you're a healthy body. Well, you might not be a healthy body, but we can get you healthy again. It's not, they sometimes have to trust and we have to talk a lot, which is part of online coaching. (laughs) As many people don't realize there's a huge personal element, at least to my coaching, because some of them have, they've been with other coaches online and it sounds like what the methods that have been used should work. But having spoken to them, there's kind of areas where there's clear improvements that needed to be done. And that's why it wasn't working. But Yeah, I think that's the overall message is that no one's stuck. You're not stuck where you are today. There's always a way to get revived stronger. There's always a way to improve upon where you are today. Um, And however small or big an improvement, that can always happen. I I, I like that. And and we, again, we sort of talked about it. You you have this lower body injury. You're like, it's the perfect time for me to train upper body. Like, let's get it on. Let's do it. Um, And and that's uh, that's good to hear because I think that's, that's something I'm trying to figure out for myself. What's the most important value for me to display? Um, and I, you know, it's my, my wife asks me all the time, like, why do you track all the time? I'm like, if I'm going to ask my clients to do it, like, yeah, I have a point system where they don't have to track calories that mm-hmm. works for most, for most people. But if your goals are, if your goals are just to look better naked and sort of lose some weight, great system to use. If you really want to get lean, like you're like, I want to see it then you got to sort of do that. And if I'm going to talk about those things, I feel like I, I have to practice them because leaders don't lead by just telling people what to do. They lead by being at the forefront. Um, 
And yeah, so I'm still trying to figure that out. And I just thought it was a great question just from reading your stuff. Um, so what is getting ready for, obviously your accident has taught you a lot in how to improve your life and how you can always come back stronger, but what has bodybuilding sort of taught you about like life or, or business? So I guess it's, yeah, there's loads of actually elements in which bodybuilding comes through into business. Just the fact that kind of, well, we all know volume is important for hypertrophy. So the same is true with business. You just have to do more. You have to do as much work as you can. You have to grind. There's periods in time where you have to push your body to its limits. There's periods of time where you have to really kind of work your ass off to build a base for a, a better business. Um, and having the ability to do that in the gym, I guess those sort of attributes definitely help within a business sense as well. But probably the biggest one is consistency. I think a lot of businesses, especially online businesses or people who have come to me for advice, I don't have any special tricks or tips. I really, really don't. Um, it's all just been a matter of kind of volume over time that's consistently done. And I think that's the same for a bodybuilder. You, you can't build a great muscular body without doing a lot of work over a long period of time and consistently doing that. Sure, you can have periods where you can rest and recover, but it's always off the back of consistent hard work. Um, yeah, there's no way getting around that. That's definitely something that bodybuilding kind of helps you realize. And I think a lot of business, like you think of uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, like he is a bodybuilder and like an incredibly successful actor and also like I mean, in government and everything. It must, yeah. those attributes have obviously helped both sides to a great degree. Um, there's... Yeah, there's obviously some connections. Yeah, I dude, I I agree. Um, it's uh, I get asked that all the time. Oh man, how do you how do you do it? Like, what do you do with a podcast? What do you do with this? And I'm like, look, I know there are a lot of people now who would say you you, you know you need to make sure your podcast is high quality. Like, get some good mics. Do this. Like, that matters. It may in a way, and you can spend fifty bucks and get a mic like I have, um, and it's not bad. It could be better, but getting the content out there is really what matters more. Like getting oh. it in like, Oh man, how do I, how do I put on the muscle? How do I look like the rock? Well, you spend like 15 years busting your ass to like just doing the same things. Like it's, mm. it's not sexy. It really isn't like weight loss. It's consistency, putting on muscle. It's consistency. Like it's not, it's not sexy. It's not flashy. You just got to put in the work. Uh, and hopefully it pays off and hopefully enough people drop out and don't care for it that you sort of slide in and become the one who knows. <laughs> um, but, uh, so you are a pizza connoisseur. I need to, I need to know for you, what makes good pizza? It's all about the base and the tomato sauce. So if you got, if you want to get a good pizza, you have to just get margarita because the toppings will obscure whatever's on the actual pizza. It's all about that base. All about that base. <laughs> all about that base. <laughs> <laughs> and the tomato sauce. So I say I'm a pizza connoisseur. I think I just eat a lot of pizza. I don't think I necessarily uh, am an expert in it. Although I used to do a lot of homemade pizzas, uh, but I can't do it in, I only have been in London for just over a year. So our oven isn't strong enough to, to do good pizzas, but it was at home. So yeah, it's all about the crust and the tomato sauce. If you've got those covered, then like the cheese doesn't matter so much. The toppings don't matter so much. Uh, but I have been to New York. So I've had New York pizza, which was incredible, but completely different, different to, I've been to Naples as well. So the Italian pizza is completely different. Both are delicious. And I can recommend both of them. So, uh, yeah, but it's all about the base and the, the tomato sauce. For how sure. do you, so how do you, do you have any good, cause I mean, I'm a little lazy. My wife and I have a, and it's awful. I know, uh, there's just like a box chef boy RD, like pizza kit. Like we, <laughs> we make our own sauce, but it's like the dough. Like I just, like we can make the dough. She can make the dough, but I have to clean the kitchen. That's the rules. Like she, if she <laughs> cooking, like we have some things that we've, we've agreed upon and I, I keep the kitchen clean or try and fail a lot. Um, cause I'm an entrepreneur and I hustle. That's my excuse. <laughs> um, but like, you know, we just use this and it's macro wise. It's not horrible, but it's not great. So how do you make like, do, or do you just say, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just going to have good pizza and I'm not going to worry about it. Mm hmm. 
See, I think I think pizza gets a really bad rap, or at least a lot of people think pizza can be, is really calorific. But well, having said that, okay, a pizza, a margarita, like a Naples style, like Neapolitan style, is going to set you back maybe 700, 800 calories. So it's not for for a small female. I mean, that's awful. That's going to be like yeah, half, 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 half their intake. Half. Uh, so they're, they're probably not going to be able to do it. I have like in contest prep when I still wanted my pizza, but my carbs were not allowing that sort of intake. I did resort to, I made cauliflower pizza. So that was egg whites, like ground up cauliflower. Then like you have to, you have to like remove all the water from the cauliflower, then add the egg whites to it, bake the base. Then add, the cooking process was like an hour, hour and a half, which was kind of <laughs> good because the whole time you're like, I'm thinking about food or oh, this is amazing, but you're not eating. So it's like, oh, you still get that enjoyment. This is, you become food, rip, Dixie food obsessed in prep. Uh, other good ones, easy ones are like using a wrap for a base. Yeah. But obviously they're nowhere near as good as having like a proper pizza. And I guess because when I bulk or even maintain, I'm on 3000 plus calories so I don't have a problem eating those sort of things. Uh, and I don't feel too bad about having the, the pre-made base because I think me and my girlfriend probably order Domino's every week and we probably have done for like the last month. Um, but for her, she she's on a small intake, so she only has half the pizza, but I just eat double as fast. So mine just goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Low fat cheese as well is a good one. Low fat cheese is actually really key uh for a lot of things but you have to find a good low-fat cheese there are some low-fat cheeses that aren't that great um but yeah, that, some is, don't that, is, <laughs> that is key uh, i also enjoy making bagel pizzas so you just take a bagel put some tomato sauce on it put some toppings on top of it and most of the, like i just get the pre-packaged bagels which are like 250 calories um so bagel like base wise that's not bad uh tomato sauce tomatoes you never count that and then maybe some pepperoni or some chicken or, or whatever um but that's that's what i enjoy but wraps are also great as as well um all right so let's get into a couple of fun questions and then i have uh some stuff from uh from a few other emails and things you've sent out that, that i found for for questions uh if you could go anywhere in a time machine where would you go oh that's a really interesting question the, I'm going to say what initially came into my head. I said I was thinking the Jurassic era only <laughs> because I'm fascinated by dinosaurs. I mean, I just love dinosaurs. I think they're really interesting animals. And I think that whole, the fact that happened just still baffles me and that we've got like the artifacts of those creatures that would be pretty damn cool to actually be there. Although I have no doubt we, I'd just get eaten straight away. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have to hide in trees or something. <laughs> I mean... I, I've always wondered about going back as well to be like, I really just hope the Tyrannosaurus Rex isn't like that big. Like he's just a gentle, like he's, he's like a miniature schnauzer or something. He just, he's not mean at all. He's just nice. He's like, why does everyone give me a bad rap? I don't understand this. Um, if your life were a movie, what would the title be? And who would play Stephen Hall? Oh, oh Wow. I'm thinking, um, who was, uh, what's his name? Marky Mark. I'd love Marky Mark to play me. Mark Wahlberg. All right. Uh, all right. He, he was literally, when I first started training, he was the physique. I was like, I want Marky Mark's physique. God, so he can play, he can play me. <laughs> Dude, who, who does like my, my goal as I get older is like, I either want to be like Mark Wahlberg or I want to be like Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Like that's, that's who I want. <laughs> and by Hugh Jackman, I mean, Brian Cron. Brian Cron, oh yeah, <laughs> Brian Cron. I'm not sure if he's a great actor, but he could certainly play a good uh, muscly figure. I, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, um, so what would what would the title be? Title. Wow, my life's so boring. What would it be like? <laughs> there, there is, there is. My life's so boring. Starring I like Mark that. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the, the Steve Show, like the Truman Show. Because that's that's what it would be. You'd just be following me around. I'd be standing here most of the day. So, speaking of that, real quick, I, I I thought of this just now. Like, isn't it interesting that that show comes out and then like reality TV sort of sort of blows up? But now, like, people make vlogs. Like, that's basically what people live their lives and make a career on. Like, essentially being the Truman Show. People love seeing people, don't they? I I still find it interesting. I used to watch Matt Ogus on. I remember watching Matt Ogus. And I tried to do my own vlogs when I was younger. And yeah, they weren't good. 
I, I've had a few people ask me about doing it. I'm like, guys, I can do a vlog and you'll just get my ramblings throughout the day. But like I'm writing, I'm reading, like I'm, I'm creating programs. I'm, I'm podcasting. Like, I don't think you really want to see, I mean, maybe the interaction between my wife and I sometimes in the routine <laughs> shenanigans we get into, but nobody want like, I don't think my life is that exciting. Uh, but, uh, you know, if, if more people want it, then uh, I guess maybe I'll do some vlogs. What store would you max your credit card out at? Um, initially Walmart literally came into my head. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, whenever I go to America, I'm like, I want to find the nearest Walmart. Cause I'm just like, I could spend far too long looking at the American food produce, like, there's too many types of cereal. How have you got that many types of cereal? That, that is my, when I was in, we were in Scotland for our honeymoon and I was like, this is so amazing. Like there's only like two things. That's it. <laughs> there's not like 16. There are two. I like Britain. This is really cool. Yeah. I mean, in contest prep, if I went into a Walmart, I probably would be, I could be there for a day satisfied. That'd be like a happy day trip. I get a lot of steps in as well because Walmart's ridiculously huge. <laughs> that's that's true. Um, man, there is there's it's ridiculous how many things that there are, and there's the brand names and the off brand and the Walmart brand. And you're like, oh my god, it's all the same stuff. <laughs> uh, We're getting there. We're getting some of this stuff's coming over. We've got some Fiber One brownies, which I adore, have come yeah. to the UK now. But listen, I can't go to the UK because you guys have Fox's Golden Crunches, and those things are <laughs> are uh, amazing. Like I ate a whole like bag of them one night after like my after my wedding when I wasn't like in like extreme like get cut and shredded mode. I was like <laughs> seventeen pounds on my honeymoon score. <laughs> uh, all right, so I know I know you uh, talked a little about Pokemon Go and, and you geeked out a little bit this this summer, but. What Pokemon would you be? If you could be any Pokemon, what Pokemon would you choose? I've got a bit of a love for Charizard. I feel like I should have someone different because he's one of the main Pokemon. So it doesn't feel nerdy enough to have one of the main ones as my go-to. I no. feel like I need someone else. But Charizard, he's just badass. Like if you ever, <laughs> I, did you watch the cartoons? Oh, where he was just yeah, like, yeah, of course I did. Just like, screw over Ash. Like I'm just going to go fly <laughs> over here. <laughs> I don't want to listen to you. I'm going to do what I want. <laughs> Yeah, and dude. Yeah, just the ability to breathe fire and fly and be a dragon at the same time. See, you you said like, oh, you know, it doesn't sound cool enough. No, that set like the like of all the other Pokemon, I I can fly, I can shoot fire out of my mouth, and I'm a dragon. Yeah, <laughs> Pretty Charizard, good. you've you've already sold me on that. <laughs> um, all right, so let's go back to uh, a few things on on Steve and your life and your story. Um, so I was reading through some of, of your emails that, that came up on, on Twitter because uh, you use the social share button on, on that. And I was reading through some things. Um, and you, know, you mentioned that you kind of had a rough childhood. You, you were kind of bullied as a kid. Um, how did that affect you? This is sort of a two-part question. So how did that affect you as a kid? And do you do anything now to sort of prevent it or fight it when you see it today? So I think... It's really strange because I think being part, I, I'm a brother with three sisters, so two older sisters, one younger. So I was already quite like, as a family, when we go on holiday and stuff, we all just stayed together. We weren't like a social family. So I was never like an outgoing social kid anyway. Yeah. So then when these comments came at me, I just went further into a shell and I just, I found it, I, I can't retaliate. Like, I don't know if you've ever been in those situations where you feel like you can't physically talk. I can remember that feeling of being like, I just can't, I, all I sat there and just went bright red and kind of, it, it was never physical bullying. So it was never to think, well, actually elements were physical, but that was more during sports and things. You kind of, people get away with it. Um, but it's definitely made me a tougher character today, but I definitely still feel elements of it when I, like, if there's ever, it's, it's funny, it's like, even on social media, if, if someone is trying to have an argument with me, maybe about they disagree with a post I've made or something, I'm really quite um, standoffish or not standoffish, but I'm very, I, I don't like to argue. There's like, there's no need to argue. There's always kind of a friendly way to do it. And I'm very much like that. And I think the way that's impacted me and helped me today is that I can help people who were like me or who have backgrounds similar to me. And I'm very, I can be very personable 
because I'm kind of a bit of a soft touch because of it. I don't ever want to get, I'm just not, I guess some people could react and they, and then mean themselves because they've been treated badly, but I'm kind of the opposite in that I've not been treated the nicest way. So if anyone ever gets treated badly, like I just don't like it at all. I just, I don't stand for it, but I, I'm not aggressive in any of my approach. It, it's strange how your childhood really kind of builds you up as a person. It, it's, it's really strange, but I, I'm really glad that now I'm able to talk about it and help other people through it as well. I think part of that's why I found kind of bodybuilding, which is quite an isolated insular yeah. sport. Again, powerlifting kind of is as well. You're in the gym, you're working on your lifts. You don't need to be in a team. Um, and I think almost my job now as an online coach, it is, I am my own kind of employee. I don't have any other people I work with necessarily. Well, I work with Mark a little bit, my new coach, but it's all kind of based around me, but I still like being around people. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that answered the question. No, no, it, it, it does. It brings up, like, I was just thinking, you know, you said that you don't want to argue with people on, on statuses and things. And, and for those who are listening, you know, you, you may not be very in depth into, but every, every industry has their own sort of things they argue about no matter what you're in. And you probably have this at work, you know, wherever you're, you're at work now, uh, where you think things one way, someone else thinks things the other, and you know, it can get into some obnoxious debates and discussions sometimes. Uh, and we have this with friends when it comes to politics or, you know, friends when it comes to movies or, or comic books or whatever, or video games that we like and someone else absolutely just hates. Um, but like one of the things about bullying is, you know, it, it's something we don't talk about because I think as for men, at least, um, we don't talk about it because we're so used to giving each other a lot of shit. That like it's just what guys do. We just give each other shit, but we're also very mean when we do it, and we don't realize that those things actually hurt a lot more. Um, and I think those are things that carry on into adulthood, and especially for people who want to get in shape. Like people are afraid to come into the gym because they're afraid that the guys who are lifting heavy weights are going to like bully them. Like, and and it's I don't know how we get past that because we do have you know in the U S and, and in Britain and in other countries, developed countries as well, you know, obesity is, is on the rise or it is a major health crisis. So how do we get people to be more active without them feeling like they're going to go somewhere and, and be bullied? Yeah, I can, I see that. And it's, I think that's partly why I attract a certain type of person because I'm very approachable for that person. Cause I'm, I'm kind of in shape, but I'm not in crazy good shape. So they're kind of like, ah, oh, like you seem like you, you're not ever shame me or you're, I think you're probably very much the same Robbie in that you attract a certain type of person. That's like, you actually seem like a legitimate, really nice guy that if I have to tell you that, like I'm embarrassed about my body, that you will just build me up, not break me down. And that's yeah. always what I try to do. I mean, I, I don't just do it with my clients. I try to do it with anyone in the kind of who wants to get fit and healthy, build people up, don't kind of be negative. And that, that, I mean, that's part of the bullying is it was always such a negative thing. So I hate negativity. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. Negative, you know, it's like Gary Vee says, negativity does nothing. Complaining does nothing. Um, and, 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 and for anyone who's, who's listening, I'm weirdly enough, sort of possibly working on an article about like, uh, like the bad things that happen in life, like, and bullying, like your, your accident was a horrible, tragic event in your life. And you could have gone somewhere else with it. And many of us, I mean, I know for, for me, like one of the reasons I got in shape was my girlfriend who eventually became my wife after I uh, drugged myself through the mud and the dirt and, and begged for forgiveness and told her how much of an idiot I was. Um, like we broke up and I was like, all right, that's it. It's time to get in shape. Like I got to I got to get out there. And like almost every time that I, I've gone through a breakup or some sort of thing, like uh, you know, men tend to get really self-destructive when really bad things happen. Lose your job, lose your girlfriend. You know, you you finally realize you have that moment where you don't like the the person you see in the mirror, and we drink ourselves or fuck ourselves stupid or smoke ourselves, you know, dumb, and and we're just very self-destructive. Um, and I think we sort of become our own bullies, and that's just something I've, I've I've thought about. But like those emotions, you can turn around and do something great with, but. How do we how do we show that to people without, you know, uh, 
without trudging up all that stuff. But I, I don't know, just questions I have in my in my head. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this because I know it's it's something that has affected you, and I really enjoy what you wrote on it uh, and coming forward with that um, because I think it's something most people don't talk about. Like, hey, I was picked on in school. Hey, my grandpa picked on me. Hey, my dad picked on me. Like, we don't talk about it, but it is something that that does affect a lot of people. Um, I think they're important. I think your article will really help a lot of people. I think you might in your head. You're like when I wrote that, I was like, it seems stupid, but if this helps one person, like if old me was reading this, I know it would help. So, so I'm sure your article will help some people out more than I, you can I mean, imagine. I, I, I hope so. I, I, I don't know. I, uh, I, re- I recently, re- recently reread, uh, the, um, infinity gauntlet series, uh, from Marvel sort of where they might be going with the film and, and read the first one, like, uh, the series from the nineties. And all I could think was, wait a minute, Thanos wanted to destroy the universe cause a girl broke his heart and wouldn't like <laughs> take him. And I was like, yeah, but remember that time when you kind of turned into an asshole when a girl broke your heart? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it just, it made me think about a lot of things and sort of like how I got very self-destructive with things, but I could, you can take those, those negative emotions and negative things and turn them around for a positive, which obviously you did with your, with your accident. Um, cause you, you're, you could have stayed in your own self pity and be like, I can't do anything. I can only ever be weak and do this and, mm. and lived off those excuses, but you didn't. Um, was there something that motivated you when that, or was it literally just, like something deep inside of you was like, no, fuck this. I'm going to do it. Or was there a book? Was there a movie? Was there a song? Something that sort of revived that, that sense in you? I think I don't, there was no book or anything like that. I think maybe I know my dad is an incredibly hard worker. And I, when I was younger, I, I mean, we didn't spend a lot of time together because he was literally just building his, working his ass off to like feed us and make sure that we had kind of everything we wanted and needed. And so after the accident, I was just, there was no stopping me. I am still to this day kind of Dixie determined and kind of stubborn. And I can remember coming out of hospital and I, I couldn't do exercise, not proper exercise. I wanted to go for a run. I wanted to burn some like energy. I wanted to do something. And I remember going out and like, full winter clothes and it was sunny outside because my my kind of body temperature was still not regulating itself properly right. and I remember just going for a fast walk <laughs> and that was the most I could do and it was incredibly frustrating because in your head I was fully back and able right. to do things but my body just wasn't there with me so yeah it was just I think probably a bit of a personal trait built in from being with my dad and the fact I've seen him work so hard to develop things in that I know for myself with my education stuff I was never a br- naturally bright kid and I went to learning support I which was well you can kind of know what learning support is I had tutors I needed extra yeah. help and I only did I actually did really well with my, with my grades and everything it was through ridiculous like I'd study for hours I'd do more than everyone it was literally like I had that outwork mentality <laughs> Lane Norton had drilled it into me from a very young age yeah <laughs> Yeah. Not that I obviously didn't know Lane. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, that's <laughs> and I, that's that. I guess that's why I was drawn to bodybuilding as well. In another sense, because it is kind of that sort of sport where it is just like you just need to keep going and push harder. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's. I think it's. I think that's one of the things that I. Yes, I'm like this is. No one's ever brought it up, but I always feel like I have to justify this. And I think it's so stupid that like, yes, I'm a giant nerd who loves video games and comics and Star Wars and all these things. But like I was also like I also played sports like I enjoyed that. But like growing up, I had to like justify to my sports friends that I was reading comic books and watching (laughs) Spider-Man on Saturday mornings like that wasn't cool enough. But then the like people who were geeks and nerds that I got to know later on, they were like, oh, you play sports. I'm like, why do I have to justify all these things? Um, but I still feel like I kind of have to say that. But I think playing sports, having some sort of competitive background helps instill that in in a lot of people, um, mm-hmm. which is why I think it's it's a good thing to have some sort of competition so that you know that you can push yourself to be better. Whether that is something like weightlifting where you are pushing yourself or you're pushing yourself in basketball, football, uh, American football, not real football, uh, <laughs> as 
Which again, that's still like it irks me that we call it soccer. I'm like, we have every other sport where like basketball, oh, ball in a basket. Okay, cool, makes sense. Baseball, there are bases, you hit a ball, makes sense. We only kick a ball in football like three times in the game. It doesn't <laughs> you run with your feet and you I don't whatever. Uh, yeah, just just my little hang up on that. Uh, so let's talk one more thing about bodybuilding. Uh, what is a, a common misconception that people have about bodybuilding that drives you nuts? Whew, there's a lot of misconceptions. <laughs> I think I, I, I'm going to say this one. I think the common misconception that bodybuilders are stupid because I think <laughs> uh, not because I think I'm massively clever, but I think the best bodybuilders are probably the smartest ones out there. And whether that's smart through getting the best coaching or smart through kind of just the way they don't get injured so they can actually keep training. And when I think about bodybuilders more anyway, I kind of disregard the guys on drugs because it doesn't interest me and it's just gets out of hand and I'm just not educated in what they need to do. Uh, so I very much focus on the natural guys. So I, I look at people like Jeff Alberts and I think he's not dumb. He wouldn't be in that incredible shape at his age if he was a stupid guy. So I think, I, I do think a lot of people think bodybuilders are really thick, but they are some of the brightest minds like Eric Helms. To me, he's just incredibly smart. Not even just the fact that he does all the research and things, but his he if you've ever spoken to him or seen him at a cinema or things, he's got a very he, he's very personable, he relates to people really well and he can present really well as well. So I think that's probably the most annoying thing I find about people who think bodybuilders are dumb, whereas actually to get into that kind of shape naturally especially is incredibly hard for, unless you're a genetic freak and then maybe you're a dumbass and you're just lucky but <laughs> for most of us it doesn't work like that okay all right oh man uh that i think that's something that does sort of happen just because it, i think it just goes back to everyone thinking that if you lift weights you're just you know you, like you said a meathead thick. yeah that you're a meathead and i don't think that's i think there's a lot of barriers that are starting to break down thanks to things like the internet and like yeah. Reddit and YouTube and all these other things, like, like we've won as nerds. Like, there's no more competing against jocks. Like, there's a superhero movie every three or four months. Like, the longest running show in the U.S. is The Big Bang Theory. Not that like I'm a fan of it, but like people are like freak out about The Walking Dead. People are obsessed with Game of Thrones. Like, you're yeah. talking about a book series that is fantasy that most people are like <laughs> nerd and people <laughs> love it. Like we've won, we've essentially won. So like all this stuff with nerds and jocks or, or meatheads, like, I don't think that stuff is true anymore. And, and I think some of it's starting to break down, but there are still some of those, those things out there. Um, so Steven, uh, I honestly, that's like all my questions. I want to keep going. Is there anything else that like, that you want to, you want to talk about or anything we sort of delved into that you want to explore a bit more, uh, or we can, we can sort of wrap things up. Oh, I don't know. Um, no, I think we've, I think something I really have enjoyed talking to you, Robbie, is the fact that I, I, I want people to, I think some people can get put off coming into these kind of sports or industries or kind of getting into shape and things and just know that everyone's normal. Like even people like Eric Helms, like Alberto Nunez, like we're all just, like they're all very normal people and like they're not anything special don't put them on a pedestal. Like you can get incredible results yourself. You just need to put in the practice and yeah, put in the grind, put in the work like we do with our business, like you would to get a promotion. You have to do the same, like level up. Like I'm sure you've yeah. written an article on like building experience points and then yeah. leveling up. Like that's exactly what you need to do. And yeah. just start today. Like there's no better time than starting as soon as you can. And if you're doing it already, just trust in that process. I think I think some people are just too impatient sometimes. And I think the stuff like this podcast and hearing things keeps people on track. I think that's a really good thing because it just keeps you, if you surround yourself by like-minded people with the information, it kind of keeps you just doing it and it becomes a habit. And then that's where all the gold's made really. Yeah. That, I, we've, we've said it a handful of times, but consistency, uh, surrounding yourself with the right people. I mean, you know, again, you are the, 
the sum of the five people you surround yourself with the most. But also remember, you live with yourself 100% of the time. So you got to make sure that you yourself are, are, are leveling up and improving uh, on your own as well. Um, Stephen, I've really enjoyed chatting and getting to know your story. And uh, I hope that anyone who's listened to this takes away that a lot of bad things can happen in life. And, and it may be very bad to you. It might not be bad to others. Um, but those, those negative experiences can be turned around for the positive. You can do a lot of good with them. You don't have to try and destroy the entire universe like Thanos. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, take the infinity gauntlet and make like happy unicorns who fly around and deliver pizza to everyone on earth, because who wouldn't want a unicorn to deliver pizza? Um, I, that, I'm not going to lie. That's what I want to go to a time machine for. Go to the, future <laughs> yeah. like, do we get unicorns delivering pizza? Uh, that might be the title for this episode. Stephen Hall on bullying and unicorns delivering pizza. Oh, wow. That'd be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, but if people want to know more about you, where can they find you online? So they can find me on, I'm Steve Hall, uh, on my personal Facebook and, or on revive stronger. If they search either of those, they can find me on both of those and feel free to shoot me a message. Absolutely fine. They can find me on revive stronger.com basically revive stronger anything and it will find me somehow but like i said like if you've got any questions about me about my past experiences anything about my health bullying you just want to share chat i'm here i'm happy to talk so definitely do it awesome well guys and everything we talked about uh as well as links will be over at sidequestfitness.com go up to the podcast find the episode for uh stephen hall uh just scroll down and find that there um or you can find some show notes as well on on iTunes. Um, Steven, thank you so much for coming on. And guys, I'll have a link for his podcast as well because he's had some amazing guests on there. Guys that are still on like my wish list that I just haven't like had the message to ask to come on yet. <laughs> yeah, it's just laziness. It's like, <laughs> I, I, I have attention deficit disorder with like work and people where people are like, hey, get this person on. I'm like, that's a really cool person. Email. Oh, I still have 12 people I haven't emailed yet. I'll get them <laughs> later. It's like all the th articles I want to write that I have snippets down and I just never write uh, or come back to a year later because that happens. Um, but anyways, <laughs> uh, find all the show notes, sidequestfitness.com, click on podcast and head on over. So, Stephen, thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. And yeah, it's been a great talk. So cheers. Thank you so much, Robbie. Step up and you gotta get it fitness Host Rob at the moment and the quest is You gotta check in and wreck it You're breaking personal records And with the help of the guests You won't be guessing on the lessons That's a plus five fears Got a low key bamf right here You wanna meet them There's no better way to greet them Than to strike a boss pose Take a look into the mirror